Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy that you are uh, joining me for what is most likely going to be one of the most uncomfortable and uh, <laughs> interesting shows that I've done in a while. This is an important one. It's an important one. We're going to get into some, some gossip today. We're going to get into some gossip about an incredibly important topic. Yes, it is a program that uh, a lot of you are going to just... You're going to be very excited to hear about, and this is going to be a small portion of you. This is going to challenge you. It's going to challenge you because there's some crazy stuff going on in the world right now. A lot of things are being revealed right now. This program is not going to be like every single other one because there's too much on the line. There's too much at stake. It's something that I personally have dealt with in my life where I in the past have struggled with whether or not I should talk about something like this or not talk about something like this. Where in the past I would think, no big deal, and I just put it out there because it's the right thing to do. Because I know the heart of God and I'm going to share the heart of God. And because I know the scriptures and because I did the due diligence to seek this stuff out. And I'm going to tell people, I'm going to tell the world. Didn't have anything to lose back then, right? Well, now it's a different story. Now I got a lot of you. I got a lot of you listening. About 125,000 of you listening. Many of whom possibly uh, may disagree with what I'm about to share. Many of you may totally love what I'm about to share. And if you do... You better check that bell. You better like it. You better subscribe. And you better share it around. You better share it around. Because there's a whole group of people. A whole group of speckled and spotted sheep. Right? That Jacob needs to be brought into the fold. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that don't know about God. That don't know about the love of God. That don't know about the truth because religions lied to them for so long. Now this is why this thing with Chris Pratt is so, so very important. Now you know Chris Pratt, the dude's a great actor, right? Guardians of the Galaxy, one of like the uh, just most awesome movies of all time, especially if you're you know, a Marvel fan. The dudes, he's so encouraging and he's so positive, and I think he handles himself so beautifully and so eloquently, and I gotta give the guy credit. But there's a problem, you see? There's a problem in the state of the world, in the religious world, in the world of Christianity, right? In the big money of Christianity with the big celebrity endorsements and the big this and the big that. Like Hillsong Church. Now, I worked for these people. Chris Pratt, big time star, right? Very vocal about his faith, was on Stephen Colbert. And he was talking about how his pastor, his cool, his hip, his hip, he uses really cool words, right? He's a lot cooler than me, right? Pound it, dog, right? That his, his pastor is, um, is very, 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 very loved and, uh, and very appreciated and very well received, right? And very hip and very cool. So Chris said that his pastor gave him a little challenge, a little 21-day fast that Chris was just coming off of. And I guess Ellen Page, who, by the way, is, um, is gay and she's married. You don't know who she is? The star of Juno, the star of Inception. Awesome actress. Awesome actress. Very, 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 very vocal LGBTQ um, speaker. Very, very, very vocal about this. So she came out with a tweet and she had said... Okay but his church is infamously anti-LGBTQ, so maybe you should address that too, Chris. Basically saying, Chris, you're talking about God, you're talking about all this stuff, why don't you talk to your pastor about the fact that he's anti-gay, uh, anti right? That he says it's, it's a sin. And now Chris, of course, in a beautiful way, I, he responded, I guess, on Instagram with just this, this goofy picture of a, of a sheep, but this beautiful... Uh What he had said was, look, you know, my church is very inclusive, they're very loving, and they're not like that at all, and that they were there for me when I went through my divorce, with, I don't know if Chris realized or not, but he was basically, he was saying that divorce was like a sin, but they were inclusive of him, right? Which kind of in a roundabout way, he's kind of saying that being gay is a sin too. That's just my estimation of context in the situation. But he said, but I think it's great the way he put this too. He said, don't, 
Don't put me in, um, you know, don't make me the public speaker for this church. You, know, you can go to a church, you can go to an organization, and you can have different ideas. You don't have to believe everything else that they believe. I can be friends and go on different YouTube channels, right, and not agree with everything that they say. This is the problem today, is that people don't love, right? And ultimately, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, there's this big thing about what biblical marriage is. Biblical marriage, right? It's a big, big arguments over this. A lot of people don't even know that in the scriptures, biblical marriage for Solomon was he could have 300 wives and then 700 concubines. That's biblical marriage. That David could have nine wives, right? And then when he's on his deathbed, he could have like a young 18-year-old virgin sleep on top of him naked. That's scripture. But see, the book was sealed up. These stories, there's a deeper, more spiritual meaning. And, and and the problem is, is that religion, religion has taken this and they have used it as a weapon for so long. And what they have done is they have killed the truth of God in the world today. And the truth of God, God who is love. Love which does not cast out. Love which is patient. Love that does not hold past wrongs against you. Love that is long-suffering. Love that never fails. Love that endures. My children, no matter what they do, I will love them. And guess what? There's a karmic law called reaping and sowing. And if you do wrong to others, you are not loving God and you will get that in return. That's the one sin that's not forgivable, right? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, the order of things, going against loving others as yourself. That was what Jesus said. He also said, because they were, they came over to him, the Pharisees, and they said to him, This person was married to this person. He died. The brother took her to wife, and then he died, and then the other brother took her to wife. In the, in the, uh, in the end, in heaven, who gets the wife? And Jesus is like, in heaven? You're not given a marriage. There is no marriage in heaven. There's no marriage in heaven. Biblical marriage. Everybody's talking about biblical marriage. Now, I'm married, and I believe in it, right? And I love it. But I'm not everybody. And everybody is different. And everybody is formed different. And everybody comes into the world different. And everybody grows differently. God, the creator of all, the potter, has power over the clay to mold it the way God wants. Who are we to say, right? Who are we to say? But love, you see, that's the thing. And here's the thing. I wonder if this pastor of Chris's, um, I wonder if he is, if he's going to say that, you know, if you're gay, you can't go to heaven. If you're gay, you're going to go to hell. I, I'm not saying that he is going to say that. But if that's a tenet of his faith, and the reason why Ellen Page brought this up is because in a 2015 uh, blog post, global pastor Brian Houston, in which he wrote that Hillsong is not a church that affirms a gay lifestyle. Um, doesn't see that person as someone that is worthy of, of God's um, spirit, love, hope. Which, by the way, everything has its existence in God. That's another thing that religion will teach you, is that somehow you can be outside of, you can be outside of the kingdom of heaven, sure. There are a lot of people outside of the kingdom of heaven. A lot of people outside of righteousness, peace, and joy right now. And I know that there are going to be a lot of people in the comment section that are going to probably be outside of that right now. And then I say to people, you know, because I don't know the mind of God. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should change his mind and repent from the things that he thinks and he does. It's not God. God doesn't change. God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that means that I guess today you could have 300 wives and 700 concubines. Is that godly? Because in script, just because it's written in scripture, right? There are a lot of things that can be twisted and taken out of context in scripture, especially if you're looking at them through the letter of the law, which kills and not the spirit of Christ, which gives life. So when I was working at Daystar Television, right, they wanted to do all these shows with this group called Exodus International, and I, I opposed it. And I still had to write these shows, which was funny because I wrote them in a way where I kind of like veiled what it was. I was putting the truth of God out there so it would be, you know, put out there regardless of whether or not they knew what they were saying. Because I felt in my heart that this wasn't a real thing where they send, you know, they're sending their kids to these camps. Where, by the way, just so you know, it's a defunct group and it's out of business.
See, here's the thing. There's an entire group of individuals that has just taken the Word of God and they've twisted it and they've, they've, they've used it to their own advantage. And here's another reason why I, I felt like I had to address this. And again, some, some might say, at your own peril, right? Well, I don't think so, at my own peril, because I'm allowed to share my faith. I don't speak on behalf of God, unlike a lot of religious people that are at the Vatican. New report. Comes out today, right? Today. This bombshell report just so happens to coincide with uh, this Chris Pratt and Ellen Page story. Now, I want you to listen to this. Four in five Vatican priests are gay, this book claims. This French journalist, by the way, it's a, it's a startling account of corruption, um, conspiracy, hypocrisy, and abuse. Some of the most senior clerics in a Roman Catholic church have been attacked, um, have viciously attacked homosexuality and condemned people. And they themselves, this journalist says, were gay. Now, this is not just some, you know, some, some guy writing a, you know, a, a hit piece on me. This is somebody who did the research, who did the, who did the due diligence, former advisor to the French government, who conducted over 1,500 interviews while researching the book, including 41 cardinals, 52 bishops and monsignors, 45 papal ambassadors and diplomatic officials, 11 Swiss guards, and more than 200 priests and seminarians. They spoke of the unspoken closet. It was kind of a joke. The people that condemn the homosexuals, that, you know, that cast them out, they're the ones that are the biggest homosexuals. And a lot of them, right? They just have relationships and close. And other ones, they go out with prostitutes on a regular basis. It's being published in eight languages across 20 countries. Next, These are the people that got the entire world to look at somebody who, for whatever reason, is attracted to their own sex, perhaps oriented that way, perhaps formed that way, for whatever reason choice, no choice. That person who perhaps loves someone of their own sex, they're wrong. They're going to burn in hell. These are the people that made that declaration. Now, it's interesting. I did a show and I was writing this show. And of course, Ted Haggard was on. I don't know if you know anything about Ted Haggard. He was like the head of the evangelical organization. And he was like the top guy, the top guy for criticizing people that were gay. Top guy that was against homosexuals having rights in Colorado, where his big church was. Well, guess what? Turns out he was smoking meth and he was having a long relationship with a male prostitute who came out and exposed him. Now, before he was exposed, ironically, right? Spiritually, I guess, significant. Coincidentally, he comes on my show and I'm writing uh, uh, two programs. The first program was about how to be an honorable father and how to raise your children right. And I decided to do the second show and it's about <laughs> condemning people in those things in which they uh, allow themselves. Those things that you condemn others are that you are guilty of will be shouted from the rooftops. A lot of people like to stand in a corner and they like to point and they say, you're not godly, you're not godly, you're not godly. There is an entire group of individuals that don't know the love of God because religion has killed it. Killed it right at the source. Put it to death at the place of the skull in each and every one of them. And then here I come, right? Here I come. What am I supposed to do, Lord? What am I supposed to do? I stumble upon this Chris Pratt and Ellen Page story. Am I supposed to come on here and say, I think I know the love of God a little bit better than the four out of five priests, cardinal bishops that are condemning people? That I've studied the scriptures long enough to know that God doesn't look to the outward cup. He doesn't look to what's outside of the man. He doesn't look to the works of the flesh so long as those works do not hurt others and do not violate his first law and his second law, which is to love God. And the second law, which is exactly the same as the first, similar to the first in the Greek, it means the same as to love others as yourself. People need to be saved today. People need to be set free today. And see, the problem is, is that this world, this corrupt system is going to take everything and corrupt it and twist it and turn it. Just like it is right now, 
because a lot of people that are listening right now, a lot of people are going to be cheering. A lot of people are going to be saying, thank God, maybe now I can say, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. Maybe I don't need to be ashamed anymore. God said to Adam and Eve when they were scared and they were hiding themselves with their fig leaves, he, he said, he said, who told you you were naked? Who told you that I don't love you because you're gay? Who told you that? Four to five priests, bishops, cardinals, a religious system. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. A lot of people, like Ellen, um, Ellen Page said, you know, the stakes are pretty high in this. She said, if you're a famous actor and you belong to an organization that hates a certain group of people, don't be surprised if someone simply wonders, why is it not addressed? Being anti-LGBTQ is wrong. There aren't two sides. The damage it causes is severe. Full stop. Sending love to all. I didn't want to talk about this. I want to be honest with you. I didn't want to talk about this. You know, because it's like, there's so much stuff in the world that, you know, th there are so many things that I see on all sides that are absolutely wrong, but then there's the, the majority, and we just all seem to be lost and at odds with each other. I don't speak on uh, God's behalf because I don't think that I qualify, right? But I will say this. I wrote an article on this. Uh, it's uh, The Reprobate Mind. What it really means, it's from Romans chapter 1, has nothing to do with a man and a woman or a man and a man and a woman and a woman. It has nothing to do with that. Okay? Nothing at all. It has to do with man leaving the truth of God to worship the lie made by man. It's the irony of it. People talk about the reprobate mind as if it is something that has to do with homosexuality. I don't have the time to go into the whole thing. But I'll read you just the beginning part of it, okay? So you get an idea. They, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations and foolish and their hearts were darkened. They professed themselves to be wise. They said, oh, we know what God wants. But they became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like a corruptible man. Corrupt man who decides that somebody is wrong for being different. They turned God into that. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It has nothing to do with homosexuality. It has to do with believing God is you. How many people worship God as a man? Big beard in heaven. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. God is spirit and he's truth and he's love. I've seen it firsthand. I've been there. I've listened to people. And they don't love, a lot of them, they don't love the sinner. If you see somebody as not worthy of God's love because of their sexual preference. And I'm not talking, by the way, you know, hear what I'm saying. Now, don't hear what you think I'm saying. I am not as holy and righteous as God. But if I know how to give good gifts unto my children, guess what? So does God. And the truth is coming. Jacob, when he uh, left Laban, his, um, his wife, Rachel, kind of stole some of the idols, and tucked them underneath the saddle. I've been listening to this the last couple of days, which is interesting, because I didn't think that, uh, that that was still within me, like the idea of fear of what might happen if I share the love of God with others. So do with this video as um, you will. I hope that it makes a difference. I hope that somebody somewhere uh, gets it. And, um, and I really do hope that you share it around because go to my website, read that essay and, um, perhaps you'll see that what you've been scared of your whole life and what you've been running from your whole life is actually there saying, who told you you were naked? You're my child. It's time to come home. The prodigal, think about how happy God is when the prodigal returns. The older brothers, they're over there 
Ooh, you know, that person, that person did this, that person did that. How are you going to love them? How are you going to kill the fatted calf? How are you going to put a robe on them? How are you going to give them that, that ring on his finger? How are you going to treat them good? I've been with you the whole time doing the right thing. And God said, my children were lost. Now they're found. The world told them that I didn't love them. And now they've heard my truth and they've come home. That's why we need to celebrate. And I hope each and every one of you celebrate with me by sharing this around if you agree. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.